I am Hazel Stiebeling. I am Chief of the Bureau of Human Nutrition and Home Economics in the United States Department of Agriculture. Our Bureau undertakes research in food and nutrition, textiles and clothing, housing and household equipment, and family economics. Our experimental work goes on in laboratories located in the department's research center, about 16 miles from Washington. We work in two colonial style brick buildings. We welcome you here to the Bureau of Human Nutrition and Home Economics. We come first to laboratories where we seek to improve home methods of food preparation and preservation. These jars of vegetables are being canned experimentally in family-sized equipment. Some of the jars are inoculated with spoilage organisms. After processing, they will be incubated and later examined for keeping qualities. In developing safe procedures for home canning, we use thermocouples to record heat penetration. And now, an example of our use of standardized cooking methods. The food specialist is comparing the braising of meat with and without water for effect on yield, vitamins, and good eating. Some of our work deals with foods in abundant supply or unfamiliar forms of foods. Many turkeys now raised are too big for the average buyer, but a turkey quarter or a turkey steak may be just right. This braised turkey leg is being served for judging. A thermocouple inside one potato in each cooking lot measures the temperature as a control for doneness. Our aim here is to classify potatoes as to suitability for common ways of cooking. We use different varieties of potatoes from different places and stored in different ways. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. You see trained judges from our laboratory staff tasting frozen strawberries and writing their verdict. They are judging the berries for natural flavor, for sweetness, tenderness, and for general acceptability. To supplement human judging, we make objective tests, too. For example, the tenderness of a berry can be measured by finding how much mercury it takes to crush it. In our up-to-date school-type kitchen, we aim to improve large quantity recipes. Today, the dish is creamed carrots and peas. It is being prepared experimentally in one of our institutional cookers on the scale of 100 servings. Before the recipe is released for general use, not only our judges, but school children as well, try out the dish. It also must pass their test. Another important part of our research is learning how foods compare in nutritive value. For this, we rely on many tools. We shall show you some of them. First is the hen and her chick. We find that a hen's protein feed actually can modify the nutritive value of her eggs. This value can be measured by the growth of the chick. The rat, another living tool, can show by its growth the vitamin value of a food. Microorganisms are among the newer tools that help measure certain vitamins and amino acids. Under controlled conditions, they grow in proportion to the amount of the nutrient being studied. More conventional chemistry is employed in many ways. Here, vitamin C is being measured chemically. Microchemical techniques help us to make the most of tiny samples. Not only can we save material that's hard to get, but after the exacting procedures have been learned, microchemical methods save time. And we use many physical tools. A photoelectric colorimeter can be used in measuring how much of a certain carbohydrate is in a food. 
And now, some of our textile and clothing research. As we learn more about fabrics and their suitability for different purposes, we can give homemakers better help on how to buy. Here, brought in for study, are samples of knitted fabrics made to specification. We use various machines to test for different properties, such as elastic recovery, breaking strength, air permeability, or moisture absorption. High elastic recovery is important for many uses of knit goods. We measure stretch and comeback by applying tension with weights, returning each time to a minimum tension of 50 grams. And this machine shows how much rubbing a fabric can stand. In developing standards for garment construction, a first step is to see how dresses are made. Everyone knows that a well-made garment is more durable than one put together poorly, but there has been little research done to find out how to sew for greatest durability. To compare strength of buttonholes made in different ways, we abrade them with this machine, developed by the Bureau. Some buttonholes wear out in a few hundred cycles, whereas those made by other techniques resist many times as much wear. And this is the way we test the strength of stitching of a pocket corner. The pattern of stitching that we found best is four times as strong as the weakest. Another line of our research is the design of functional house dresses and aprons. First, the clothing specialist works out an idea with muslin on a dress form. Later, she tries out her design on a live model to test it for comfort, convenience, and safety. After the trial dress has been worn in real work, a pattern is cut. And then the design is ready for the final test. How will it look and wear when made up in suitable cloth? Here is one functional house dress designed by the Bureau the bias cap sleeve and the back pleat work together to allow for reaching. The skirt is comfortably full. Care of clothing demands attention, too. In home laundering, how do the different types of soaps and synthetic detergents compare? At what concentrations and at what temperatures should they be used? For this study, we needed a method for soiling fabric samples uniformly, day after day. So we designed this machine. The soiling agent contains carbon and fat. The fabric, evenly soiled, is cut into strips. The soil is set by oven heat. Before laundering, we determine light reflectance, a measure of the amount of soil in the fabric. Steel balls for friction, a solution of soap or detergent, and the wash is ready. The laundrometer can wash 20 samples at a time. We come now to household equipment. How do the different types of equipment perform on the job? And how can each type be best used and cared for? In this laboratory, we are studying washing machines. To test a household washing machine, we need a full-sized wash. So samples of percale, uniformly soiled, are first cut and then sewed or pinned into squares of muslin. Such square laundered in each machine we study using a standard procedure, recording temperature and time. Meanwhile, a similar load is washed in a control machine. The amount of dirt removed is learned by measuring the reflected light before and after laundering. Here you see a standardized cake recipe being developed to test baking performance of electric ovens. The location of pans in the oven is standardized, the temperature and the time of baking. 
Judges establish the acceptable upper and lower limits of browning, and standards are set up with color charts for reference. In this laboratory, home freezers are being given an engineering test. To predict performance in the home, the freezer is loaded with filled cartons. Some have thermocouples inserted and are placed where the freezing is likely to be fastest or slowest. The freezers connect with these meters, counters, and time clocks. They record energy consumption, the number of times the current goes on and off, and the proportion of time the freezer's motor is running. In this laboratory, we are comparing the amount of two fuels that it takes to cook farm family meals. For a certain number of days, we prepare the meals on a gas range. Then we move in an electric range, and the experiment continues. In our experimental housing laboratories, we study space requirements for kitchen work. For example, how much or how little workspace does one need to do an efficient job of home canning? Here, an architect completes the perspective drawing of a farmhouse. The Department of Agriculture and the states maintain a regional plan service for farm families, and our bureau has a part in this. The house you see is designed for the Northeast. After a regional committee selects a group of plans, architects and draftsmen develop the working drawings for them. These are checked by architects and housing specialists to be sure they meet functional requirements. Families can obtain the completed plans from the State Extension Service. In downtown Washington, our family economic staff is at work. Many families turn to our bureau for help in money management. This letter from a mother of four is typical of many. She wants to provide healthful meals and good food at low cost. Materials prepared by our family economists not only give help to the families that write in, they are also used by social workers, like this one, showing a mother how to use a food plan. Together, they work out a weekly market list. Extension workers use our material in similar ways. And teachers use it too, like this one, giving a lesson on meal planning and food buying to high school seniors. She is bringing out points on price and nutritive value. Policymakers also use our family economic materials, like this group, concerned with milk consumption. To give such help, our economists must have a wide background of information, facts about how families live, how they use their incomes, and what they buy. Here is a representative of our bureau on a food survey. This homemaker will keep a record of what her family eats. Our representative is helping her get started. To give help in food economics, we also need the best possible data on the nutritive value of food and on the food requirements of people. We must keep abreast of the facts as scientists all over the world gain new knowledge. All that we can learn about the composition of a food is recorded on sheets like this and evaluated so as to arrive at the fairest figures for each nutrient. Putting together what we know about what people eat, what they need, what is in food, and what foods cost, we build our food plans. These we have tested by families themselves. They use the shopping list and the menus we have suggested, and then report back on how the plan works. Our aim always is to help the family get a great deal of good nutrition for its money and food they like besides. We put the results of our research into publications for both the homemaker and the teacher. For the homemaker, such publications as the National Food Guide, <coughs> Nutrition, Family Fair, Home Freezing, Choosing Pots and Pans, 
fitting coats and suits. Farmhouse plans. Planning the kitchen. Planning the bathroom. Planning your window curtains. And many others. And publications for the teacher, such as composition of foods, facts for consumer education, helping families plan food budgets, planning foods for institutions, guiding family spending, how families use their incomes, rural family living, and numerous others. Our educational materials take other forms, too. Information for the press, radio scripts, charts, film slides, motion pictures, and television programs. Yes, the research of the Bureau of Human Nutrition and Home Economics can help everyone everywhere to achieve better living now and in the years ahead. <laughs>